Hello there and welcome to this special interview on Alt24 News. Have you ever wondered who has helped into bringing Arabic language in computers? If ever you Google it, then Bashir Halimi's name is going to pop first right away. To know more about who is Bashir Halimi's speech mobility CEO and how he has tracked his way into a successful career worldwide and could not make it in our studios as he's currently living in Canada. I'm Nadia Kasmi and I am interviewing Bashir Halimi as the world is celebrating in Arabic Language Day. First of all, I did not want to make it any special report about you. For example, where you were born, your educational career, background. I just wanted it to put it this simple. Who is Bashir Halimi? Assalamu alaikum wa tahiyati li kull man yusharik fi hadhi al-hassa wa yushahiduha. Yeah, it's always good to know who, who I am. Uh, I am an Algerian computer scientist. I'm established in Montreal, Canada since 1975. I come from a modest family living in the Douar uh, of a small city called Mgawrush in the eastern region of Algeria. Mgawrush is a, a Roman city famous for its schools back then. Its name comes from Madoros. It was the native town of Apulius, uh, Apulé author of The Golden Ass, Land d'Or, uh, and also uh, Augustine of Hippo, uh, Saint Augustin, studied in Daurus. So it's a city that was predestined uh, for uh, over 20 centuries as a city of uh, knowledge and science. I did all my primary school in Daurus, uh, but had to continue in different cities afterwards in a city like Sadrata, which was about 30 kilometers away from Daurush, and then uh, went to Annaba, to the Lisi Technique of Annaba, uh, which was 150 kilometers from Daurush. So since my, er my pri early primary school, I was very good in math and physics in general. So I liked solving problems and built a lot of confidence in myself and my ability to analyze and solve problems. So I've been raised by my parents believing that I had to be smarter and better than others in order for me to get success and recognition for what I do. So I have always worked harder, always trying to surpass myself and do better than what I did before, and especially do better than the others around me. Mm -hmm. Early on, I developed a sense of curiosity about how things work and how they were designed and made. I always believed that I could do better than others. I, I was very confident. I was even stubborn. You know, to, I always liked challenges, even when I knew nothing about how difficult they are. You may, that's it. So I, I would stop here, but uh, just to tell you how stubborn I am, you may have read the story on Facebook about uh, my BAC exam, baccalaureate uh, exam, where I had to correct an error in the physics discipline. It takes a lot of courage and a lot of uh, mm -hmm. uh, self-confidence to mm -hmm. go to an exam, to read the question, and to realize that the question is not correct. And instead of saying, well, maybe I'm not correct, because the exam is usually prepared by uh, professionals, several professors reviewed several times before being printed uh, and distributed to different schools at the day, uh, the, the D date. But instead of that, I said, I'm, I'm confident in myself. So I wrote in the response that I think the question should have been this way. And so I decided to answer the question the way I stated it, not the way it was put in the exam. I checked with a, a professor that I had in Annaba and later on he actually went back, analyzed and realized that yes, I was right. So then they called uh, everywhere in Algiers and had everywhere uh, across the country uh, people uh, make that correction that uh, please read question so and so it should be like this instead of this. Mm -hmm. So these are nice stories that I keep uh, in my memories. Uh, Bashir, what has led you to work on improving the use of Arabic language on computers? Well, first, as you may know, I did not wake up one morning saying I need to make computers usable mm -hmm. in Arabic. Mm -hmm. It all came when I needed to create a greeting card in Arabic to send to my family. As I told you, I most of the time I was living away from my family, so not in the same city as my family lived. 
And this happened in 1978. So I, it, was, it has been three years since I came here to Canada. And I started to feel comfortable with computers. I started feeling that I could control, make the computer do what I wanted to do. So uh, that's when I said, why don't I have the computer write the greeting card in Arabic, Eid Zaid, to be written in Arabic. You have to know, I have to tell you that I love art and science in general. I particularly love Arabic calligraphy and the art of writing it with beautiful designs. I have, since I was young, I always wrote greeting cards with my hands. I put uh, coffee names in my city in Dawush with my hand also, free of charge, obviously, it's not a, it's not a profession. Even the city of, my, of the Beladiyat of Dawush, I wrote Beladiyat in Dawush with the paint on the wall because I like the calligraphy with some, with some arts. So um, since um, I, I would say, uh, I always studied away from home and uh, for many years I had to write these greeting cards uh, by hand and send them to my family for the holidays. You remember, we didn't have internet at that time, we didn't have email. Mm -hmm. So in 1970, 1978, I, um, I, I, as I said, I was comfortable with programming. So I decided to have the computer write Eid Said in Arabic. And um, that was for me to well, obviously send greetings to my family, but at the same time to show off that I now know how to use computers. The problem is that um, uh, it, was, it wasn't as simple as I thought. So when you say Eid Said, first of all, it is written from right to left, contrary to English and French, which go from left to right. The second difficulty is that I realized that in Eid Said, the Ain of Eid is written differently from the Ain of Said. It's the same letter, but it has a different shape. So then I started thinking, how can I tell the computer that you should write this Ain this way and the other Ain differently? So I had to come up to understand the logic of it. Uh -huh. So Imagine, this is our, my language, I have learned it since I was a child. I never asked myself these questions. And then quickly I thought, oh, so the letters of Arabic, they have four different shapes. In the uh -huh. beginning, in the middle, at the end, and alone. And then quickly I realized that there are some letters that don't have four shapes. For example, a del, a del, alif, a ra, zay, they have only two shapes. Either they're uh -huh. connected to the right or not. And then some others have only one shape, which is like Hamza and like all the digits and all the uh, uh, special characters. So, you know, what was supposed to be something simple uh, started to become uh, difficult. And, um, and then, so, but then I wrote the, the, the algorithm that would determine the correct shape of each letter. Um, but then after that, I uh -huh. started uh, facing some bigger problems, more yeah. complex problems. Talking about yeah. these problems that you might bring right after this question, uh, according to the research that I have done, I have heard that you uh, have uh, re uh, sold your idea or your project to Microsoft. Have you ever regretted this? Absolutely not. No, uh, actually, I'm very proud that mm -hmm. Microsoft bought the technology because it was, um, it was a, a good way. It was the ultimate recognition that what I had designed is the best in the world because Microsoft, before coming to take the technology from my company at that time, Alice Technologies, they, they looked around everywhere mm -hmm. to see if there is another technologies that, uh, technology that is very adequate for them. They also had a team that, they, uh, that wanted to do the same thing internally. But then came to the conclusion that uh, this technology, which was patented, we have a patent for that, uh, is the best because they went in the market and the market was telling them the best technology for Arabic, uh, for Arabization of computers comes from Alice Technologies, my company that I started in 1981. And in 1986, Microsoft came to our office and then offered to buy the technology. And uh, for me, I wasn't even looking at the price or how much money this would give me. The important thing is that I said this technology, the correct way of using Arabic on computers would be deployed all over the world. Mm -hmm. And this would save the language. That was the most important for me is to make sure that the Arabic that we use in computers is correct. There's no distortion because 
again, I have to bring just a little detail. At that time, there are companies, other companies and other groups, and not the least is IBM, the, the, the biggest company in the world. They were promoting the idea of changing uh -huh. the Arabic script, how we write Arabic, uh -huh. to integrate it in, in the computers. They said, we have to adapt the language to make it fit in computers. And I came from a different view. I went to Dubai and Cairo and different places to say it should be the other way around. We have to make sure that computers work hard enough to integrate Arabic in its complete richness and culture and history and without any distortion. Uh, Obviously the, that are, uh, yeah. In the process of making this happen, what are the sorts of obstacles that you have faced into uh, making the usage of uh, Arabic language easy on computers, briefly speaking? Yeah, well, uh, the first thing is that the approach that we were promoting, that I was promoting, required the use of a microprocessor. And typewriters didn't have microprocessors. And microprocessors were expensive and people didn't know how to program. The microprocessors, the microprocessor for people, for viewers, is like the brain of the computer. It's what mm -hmm. Intel microprocessor, Intel makes these microprocessors, Zilog, another company that does that, AMD makes these uh, microchips, these are the chips. So what we were proposing required some processing, that means it required a microprocessor, and a lot of people said, where are you going to put this? And we said, okay, it's going to be in terminals and printers and computers everywhere. We were talking about 1980s, and a lot of people said, you're, you're dreaming, you're crazy, you cannot think that computers would all have microprocessors. So what is what I was fortunate about is that time proved that I was right because mm -hmm. with time microprocessors became affordable and then it was possible to have intelligent computers and and good processing of Arabic without being too expensive. The other thing the other biggest obstacle that I faced is investors and people in general. Mm -hmm. Imagine again in 1980s yeah. We are talking about computers known to be like super calculators. Mm -hmm. That's what they did. Yeah. So today, obviously, when we talk about computers in Arabic, a lot of people say, so what? But at mm -hmm. that time, computers were not used for text. They were used to do payroll, statistics, mathematical calculation. That's the main reason. So it was like a calculator. And when I come in and others, I mean, we come in and we say, we need computers to be usable in Arabic. They say, why? Mm -hmm. And you say, because people may enter text. They say, but computers are not for text. So that's the other difficulty. And the difficulty came not only from financial people and investors here in Canada and the Western world, but also in the Arab world. I remember when I showed our products for the first time in 1983, uh, the first time was in 79, but after that in a trade show, in a commercial show in 1983, Arab people that I thought would love what we did, instead they said, uh, you know, how, how much is it? If it's a little bit more expensive than the English one, then they say, well, we could do just with English. We don't need the Arabic. Mm -hmm. So uh -huh. I had to go back to my values as a stubborn person to continue Mm -hmm. regardless of this resistance and obstacles. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, how did you manage to overcome these challenges? Uh, who simply has supported you and who has failed you? Well, the first thing, the first thing uh, to overcome this obstacle was, again, I believed that I was right. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I said, it's just a matter. That means I'm not explaining things properly. So I worked harder to explain and convince to explain the process and convince people that this is very important that we should not change our language to integrate it into computers we should make computers accept our language as it is and i worked with people who didn't have any emo like uh, who believed in technology more than others microsoft is one of them some uh -huh. other computer manufacturers, uh, Digital Equipment Corporation, and some other companies in, in Europe, they, when we explained to them, they said, that's the right thing. And we tell them, for example, anyway, I don't want to give you details because I don't want to lose the interest of our viewers. But if we did what IBM proposed today, we cannot do even a search on internet because it was not appropriate. But with this method, we could do a search and we could integrate Arabic in a very integral uh, way. So who believed in me? 
people who believed in technology, that technology is there to overcome problems and not the other way around. We don't have to change our ways to be able to use computers, but it's the other way around. And uh, the other thing is, is, uh, is that I believed in myself. So the first one mm -hmm. to believe in, my, in me is myself. So I said, yeah. this is it. It's right, it's correct, and so I'm stubborn and kept at it, and this comes back from my uh, Bashir, early eight years. Yeah, yeah. talking about uh, self-confidence here, uh, what pieces of advice can you just bring or uh, uh, give to Algerian youths who are actually interested in same fields, uh, who have big, big dreams in this case? Well, uh, you, you said it, dreams, have big dreams. This is the most important part of my intervention here is mm -hmm. to tell young Algerians to believe in themselves and to continue having hope that everything is possible. Mm -hmm. And the only way, the, the only reason why uh, many times I tell my story, not to say, look how great uh, life has been for me, but instead to say to say to tell people and young people especially and those in Algeria who are having a hard time to tell them look where I came from and look where I got where I am now mm -hmm. nobody nobody starting with myself would have thought that this is possible coming from no man's land and ending in the biggest spheres of the biggest technological uh, innovators is is something that I, I'm very proud of, I have never dreamt about, but I'm telling the young people in Algeria, I know it's a hard time, they're going through mm -hmm. hard times, uh, but look, uh, keep at it, technology is available, now you have internet, believe in yourself, keep on pushing, and brighter days full of hope are, in, are, are ahead of you, so keep believing. Great. Talking about Algeria here, aren't you thinking about running any uh, technological pro projects uh, in Algeria? Well, not for myself. Uh, the, you know, it's, uh, I don't want to say that I'm old, but uh, the time, the opportunity, there was a window of opportunity where I could have done something mm -hmm. directly myself in Algeria. And I tried at that time. Uh, the circumstances were not uh, appropriate or were not there for that to happen. So I accept it. Yeah, I regret it a little bit. I wish I wish I had the opportunity to do that because since I was a, a little kid, I was always dreaming that my future would be in my country, in Algeria, mm -hmm. with my countrymen and with my family and friends and uh, seeing where I grew up and seeing it grow, develop and participate and contribute to the development of my country. But uh, the uh, circumstances uh, did not allow that. So I tried to contribute as much as I can from where I am now. And hopefully we could motivate and help and assist young gener the younger generation to take their future in their hands and to build a better Algeria for themselves. Hopefully. Uh, well, lots of people might ask this question, including myself. What are you working on for the time being? Any, any special projects? Well, first, apart from speech mobility, which is um, uh, changing the way phone systems and uh, business communications work, uh, we're making them much smarter, more intelligent, much easier to use, much safer to use on the road. So these are challenges that face the current uh, business community. And we have developed a product that addresses all of these uh, solutions, and it inspired a lot of other companies to build similar products. So I don't, I don't mind seeing uh, companies build products similar to the ones that we have designed and uh, they become competitors. But the important thing is that we're solving problems for the humankind. Uh, and so today that's what I'm finishing like uh, as a project, but also I'm gonna stay involved in uh, developing technologies that help people, especially vul vulnerable people. Um, for example, for a certain time, I was involved heavily with the Canadian Red Cross to help vulnerable people when they're impacted by disasters to build mm -hmm. technologies so that help and assistance would come much faster so that we could save lives. Anything that is related to help people, technologies to help people, is something of interest to me and I will continue to be involved in there for 
whatever, the rest of my life, I would say. That's nice. Uh, we cannot finish this uh, nice conversation without asking uh, about what you miss most about Algeria, taking into consideration that you haven't uh, visited Algeria for a while. Yes, I haven't visited Algeria for two years and a half, and it, uh, it feels like an eternity, to be honest with you. I really miss Algeria. I miss Algeria as a whole. Algeria is very hard to define because it's an emotional thing. Uh, when I land, each time I land in Algeria after all these years, I feel something very special. And I tell my friends sometimes when I go to Algeria, I tell them if people knew how much pleasure and how much uh, like a personal psychological therapy it is for me to be in Algeria, they would ask me to pay to go there. Obviously I do pay, but uh, uh, for, for the tickets, but it's, uh, it's, it's, Missing the, the Algerians themselves, seeing them uh, go to their lives every day. I sometimes, when I go there, I just sit somewhere and I see people going around, looking at the nature, how, how beautiful it is. We're so well gifted, Algeria, by uh, God and by nature. Uh, I mean, we have, we have a huge desert. We have uh, a lot of beaches. We have a lot of green uh, land and it's, and it's really beautiful. Um, and so, yeah, family, friends, and seeing Algeria get better is, uh, gives me a feeling that is uh, very hard to match anywhere else. Well, let's see these pictures uh, together on the screen. Uh, any comments? Well, it's a lot of memories, obviously. Uh, this is an area where I grew up since uh, my it reminds me of my childhood. It reminds me of all the dreams uh, when I was uh, very young. Um, not knowing what the future reserves for me and uh, knowing that uh, even at that time I didn't really appreciate the long history of uh, science and knowledge that uh, was in that area, which is in Dawrush and Madoros, Madar. Um, the only thing I learned later on is that Apulé was born there, the, the Greek philosopher who wrote a very, very popular book, uh, which is Landor. And then also learning that Saint Augustin studied there. So each time I go to these rooms and I visit, I see how life was back then. You know, several several centuries uh, ago. Uh, so it's it tells us that there is history that uh, we are another generation in a long uh, life of civilization. The other thing is that we look at the city, and the city itself is um, you know quite. Mm -hmm modest uh, mm -hmm. people, you know, what's amazing about the population of Dawrush is that they don't talk about their problems. They just, they, they're all very positive about life in general. Anyone you ask on the street, how are you? They would tell you, I'm very well, thank you very much. Thank God, alhamdulillah. And so they're, you know, I, I noticed that this is a big difference with people in the Western world who have a lot of things that we don't have in Algeria in general and in Daurush in particular. And when you ask them, how are you? They say, oh, we miss this, we miss that. We don't have this, we don't have that. But in Daurush, they're so, they have peace of mind. They're happy. They're satisfied with what life and God gave them. And this is beautiful. And uh, I miss them. I, I, I like that city. Um, it deserves better than what it has today, but the people of Ndawrush, um, I give them my uh, best regards mm -hmm. from Montreal today mm -hmm. and wish them a very happy Arabic language day. Thank you so much, Bashir Halimi, a speech mobility CEO and a key helper in making the usage of Arabic language easier on computers. And thank you so much for following us on Alt 24 News. Bye bye for now. Thank you 